This is 18-year-old Joshua Carmona. In March of 2017, Joshua's mother was found unresponsive in her home in what appeared to be an obvious homicide. While the police investigated the crime, they would see Joshua driving around in his mother's car. After initiating a traffic stop, the police began questioning Joshua. What he told them was shocking. So you know, man, um, this room is audio and video recorded. Just so you know, I'm going to turn this on as just a backup. <clears throat> just, just so, and the reason why we do that is just so I can't put any words in your mouth, okay? Uh, do you take any medications or anything? No, sir. No? Okay. Do you take any drugs? Yes. What kind of drugs do you do? Like? Do you do spice? I think so. You think so? I think that's why I was so much more paranoid. Okay. When was the last time you did that? Today. Today? What time? Four or five. Four or five? Okay. How are you feeling right now? I'm still coming down. Still coming down? Okay. Do, you know where you, do you know where you are right now? I'm up. Yeah, I know where I am. Where are you? I'm in a Texas office. You're in, you're, in, you're in the sheriff's office? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do you know what year it is? 2017. Okay. Um, and, uh, and the reason why I'm asking you these questions is that I want to make sure that you, you, you're, you're okay to talk to me. Okay. Yes, sir. And that you know you're you're in, you seem like you are. It seems like you're a little quiet right I'm now. Quiet, but, but I know what's going on. Okay. Um. Well. After making sure that Joshua is aware of what is going on around him, and then reading him his rights, they ask him to explain the events that happened earlier that day. Without hesitation, Joshua gets right to the point. I'm honestly, I just want to know what happened tonight, man. But what happened today? Today I woke up and. I decided I, I killed him. Okay. That was me. Okay. Why, why did you kill him? I, there was a lot of reasons. Okay. Well, Josh, I have all the time in the world. And do you want to talk about it? I do. I'll talk to you about the story. Yeah, what I do. Okay. Well, there's a lot. Of, do you want me to start with when I first started having these, like thinking about this and starting getting high? Joshua, I want you to tell me whatever you feel comfortable telling. That's me. that's okay. what I'm trying to say. I yeah. Feel comfortable so wh here. whatever you feel like comfortable telling me, because I want to listen to you. Okay. I just, I'd always, sometimes I had this plan because I knew part of me hated them. Like, okay, it's me, my stepdad, mm -hmm. and my little sister in the house. And I don't know if I'm ready to do this right now. Well, when did this all start for you? All of it sounds like there's today. been some things that you've been thinking about for a while. It doesn't seem like just a you know one moment it all happened, right? Like, um, I've recently got out of prison in Georgia. I mean, jail for mm -hmm. DUI, and I was getting ready for a court date in April in Pennsylvania, and instead of like getting ready for that. I was just thinking maybe I should quit, maybe I should give up, and just try and run away, get high, get away, and just, and just avoid that. I just want to just, just stop. You had said that you weren't ready. Do, do you want to continue talking to us? I am. Okay. The plan was to go do something like that, like where I'm just really high, and what I did was I went after her to get This case begins back in 1998 when Joshua's mother, who was only a teenager, gave birth to him. Shortly after he was born, Joshua was given to his grandparents because his mother believed that she was unable to care for him and his father was nowhere to be found. Joshua would stay with his grandparents until he was 11 years old and then he would go back to live with his mother. That I was thinking about that led me to do this was I was blaming for not being there. Mm -hmm. 
and I like I think I just held it in. I hated her for that, and we were just not talking about it because of me. Because I was just getting, just going out late, not being sober, ruining that. And I think it kind of worked together. Like I was gone from the house more, just getting high. They noticed I wasn't there, and we just stopped talking after that, and that's when I started. I've been thinking about this like for a while. When you say thinking about this, what do you mean by that? The, oh, that's a good question. I've been thinking about harming my parents. Mm -hmm. So not just your stepdad too? Mm -hmm. That was the what I was originally gonna do today. Okay. Well, what is that? I was... Let, let, let's let's, let's start from the let's beginning, man. What, what, how, how did you do it? What did you do? When she came home, I snuck up on her. And I used a bat. What did you what did you do with the bat? I I did what you saw. We I haven't really been in the house too much, so just, so just just you know, can, can you take me through how you did it? I don't want to talk about that part. Okay, that's fine. That's what, if if you don't want to talk about that, that's fine. That was the worst. That was what? That was the worst thing I did. Okay. I made a lot of mistakes, but that part wasn't really. It didn't add up. And it was, it was, I did something so bad, I just don't. Okay. Well, let, let me, it. can I ask you this? I killed her. I, 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 I know. Okay. But what, what I, what I would like to know is, where's the bat? <laughs> it was in the house. It's in the house? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I left everything in the house. Okay. What, what, what other, what other, did you use anything else? Like I was trying, I was cleaning up the carpet. Uh huh. I didn't use well. There was a knife too. Okay. But I didn't really use it. Okay. Even though Joshua and his mother shared a home, he felt like he didn't belong. His mother spoke often about having to raise a child she never really wanted. In 2012, his mother would marry her boyfriend and have a daughter with him. The emotional distance between Joshua and his mother would continue to grow. Joshua would watch as his mother and stepfather would nurture his half-sister in a way his mother never did for him. Josh, there, there, obviously there's, there's some things and in, in, in you feel com you talk to me about, I'd like you to talk to me about whatever you feel comfortable with, okay? I'm not going to force you to talk to me. You want to know what happened. Yeah, I, but I, I'd like to be able to explain it somehow to, to whoever's surviving here, okay? That's the, that's the thing. Well, let me ask you this, Josh. How do you feel now that all this is over with? How do you feel now? Like about me? Or yeah. About did it, you, you had said that you've been playing this a while. I feel I feel like I completely ruined Caitlin's life. Okay. Well, obviously, there's been some tough things that have happened in your life that have led up to this, right? It's not something that you just decided this morning was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you talk about holding some things against your mom that happened to you earlier in life, okay? We're detectives, right? So we detect things. We go out. We gather information. And we've gathered a lot of information today because we were worried about you. We wanted to find you and see if you were okay, all right? In gathering information, we understand that you didn't have... The easiest life growing up it sounds like you didn't have a dad that was around much and you had a mom that had an opportunity to be around and chose not to be around huh. is that accurate yes okay and it, so i don't want to put words in your mouth but we want to understand where this started at for you so when you talk about holding things against your mom, is that part of it or are we going back to the fact that she went off and was living her own life it was like that was the justification for it that's okay. what i was that's okay what made me think she told me it's okay now's the time for you to talk to us when i when i was a kid 
and she would visit. All I, I would, all, all I think about now is when I was a kid, and she would visit for like a day or two, and then she would leave, and I just remember me crying myself to sleep because I was really sad. What were you sad about? Because she came and I was happy for a little bit, but then she was gone again. As his hatred towards his mother grew, Joshua began experimenting with different drugs. Eventually, his parents would find out and they would kick him out of their home. Joshua began living with friends, but he could not stop thinking about his mother and the love she showed her daughter. Because of our bad relationship, I was still holding that against her too. What do you mean by your bad relationship? We didn't talk at all. And when I turned to drugs, we started talking about nothing, never, never seeing each other. And so when did you come back to live with your When my grandma died. And what was that? In April of 2011. In April of 2011? I think so. I was 11. I don't actually remember what year it was. Okay, but you think you are about 11 when that happened? And you're how old now? I was in sixth grade. Okay. And you're how old now? 18. All right, so we're talking about seven years ago. Uh -huh. And in the last seven years, have you made any amends about the past? Has she like made any efforts to make amends with you or? We've talked a few times, but what I, we didn't talk for years about it until high school. We were just having an old relationship and we talked about it. And I kind of, I opened up to her once and I asked her about it. And, but it only happened once. Okay. When, when did you do that? In sophomore year. Sophomore year, so just a couple of years ago, two years ago or so? Yeah. It was in high school and my mom was living with us. But, um, how's your relationship with your stepfather? It's the same thing. Same thing? We never talk. I just stay in my room. And when I see him walking around the house, I say nothing with him. You see nothing with him? Yeah, we don't really talk. And we sit in silence at dinner. That's, that's the horrible relationship I was talking about. After Joshua took his mother's life, he took his sister with him so he could drop her off at his grandfather's house. While he waited for his grandfather to get home, he stopped at a park to meet a friend. Joshua would receive a notification on his phone that his grandfather had decided to go to his parents' house instead to pick up his sister. Joshua knew that he had been caught, so he asked his friend to take care of his sister. He then drove around in his mother's car until the police finally found him. Phone and you're texting your grandpa? What's his name? Okay. Yes. All right, and you make arrangements to meet him, you think, at his house to drop off. Is that right? Okay. Make sure you correct us if we're not right because we want to make sure it's right, all right? So then you said something about, but then he comes to your house instead? Yeah. So how did that happen? I wasn't, well, he was... I don't think he was questioning why I asked him. Wait, where Drop were you when on. he showed up to the house? I was at the park. At the park? Mm -hmm. Who were you with? With Josh. With Josh? With one of my friends. Okay. He's who I left. Okay. Okay. Josh is a good friend. Like I said, he like I told you right from the beginning. Okay. Mm -hmm. He did exactly what you told him to do. You, you, he dropped he dropped her off. Okay. Yeah. I, that, that wasn't part of the plan at all. I, I get that it, man. I get it. And, and, you know, things do spiral out of control. We understand that. Okay. But so go, keep going with, with what, what happened. Where was it? Well, you were, so then you're texting mm -hmm. from your phone and arranged to meet him at his house to drop off. Mm -hmm. But you're yeah. at the park with Josh. Yeah. Okay. So then what happens next? And I knew he came to my house because I could see it on my phone. The door was opened. Oh, okay. oh, you have cameras, like you can pull it up on the app? We have a security thing on the app, and okay. I knew at that point it was over. Why is that? Because there was still some on the carpet. Okay. So at that point, you had already killed mm -hmm. Okay. They have Joshua confessing to the crime, but what they don't have is details. Details help prove that not only was Joshua there, but he was in fact the person who committed the crime. Now they will ask Joshua to explain in more detail exactly what happened when his mother came home. So then what happens when she comes home? Uh, 
I should, I told her to go look at something. I was standing in the kitchen. It's okay. Josh, it looks like there's a weight on your shoulders. Talking about this might lift that weight off your shoulders. It might. Beat a dead horse here, and like I said, we before, and, and it's up to you if you want to keep talking to us. She, she's, she comes in, and they say, I, I hit the, um, before she came, I hit the staircase with the bat, so it was chipped. I was say, standing in the kitchen with the bat and she came around the counter to look at it because I told her and I just I, I grabbed it and just hit her where'd you hit her? in the head okay. and she fell down but she wasn't out and so I just kept hitting her until she until she stopped Okay. Okay. Was she fighting with you at all? Was there no. like a struggle? No. Did one of the legs on one of the tables like break or is that? She fell on the table. Okay. And do you remember that happening and breaking the table or something? She, she just went against it and the table got bent because of that. Okay. And where's that? Because I haven't been in there. Where's that table in the room? The counter's here and she walks around it and the table's here. Okay, are we in the living room or the kitchen or something else? This is the kitchen and mm -hmm. it opens up into the living room and the okay. dining area and the living room. And so the table you're talking about is in which room? The dining area. Okay, so she fell into it and this is while she was still like kind of on her feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you pulled her, how did you get her into the bathroom? I rolled her onto sheets and just dragged it. Okay. Is she dead at that point, or do you know? Yes. Okay, and how do you know that she's dead then? I know that might sound like dumb questions, but I'm asking you because I'm not there right now, and when we go to the house, then it'll help us to understand everything that we see, whether it lines up with what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you know at that point she's dead? Did you check for a pulse or anything like that? I checked to see if she was breathing. How'd you do it? On her, her back. On her back? You're feeling for like a pulse, or or it's you're seeing if her chest rose, and okay. Okay. So then you had her in the sheet and pulled her into the bathroom, and then then what happened? And then I turned on the fan and just closed it, and then I started pouring um, baking soda on the rug and okay. trying to clean all the blood. Because okay. are you waiting for your stepdad to come home? Mm -hmm. All right. So then, what's your plan after you've got the bathroom? And then what was the rest of the plan for the day? It was to get cash so I could take the car. So how are you going to get cash? With her cards. Okay. Do you know her pin numbers and all that stuff? Or? I figured one out. You figured okay. one out? Okay. How'd you do that? It was on her phone. There is very strong evidence that the lack of nurturing care of a young child has a lifetime impact on them. Studies have shown that infants raised by nurturing parents have far less anxiety, insecurity, and alcohol abuse. They also found that they are more likely to have successful careers. The opposite is true for infants who receive little to no nurturing. They struggle to form deep and lasting relationships. They have a higher chance of resorting to violence and substance abuse to resolve their problems. Who? My dealer. All right, what does he deal? The spice. You get spice from him too? Because at this point, you haven't taken anything yet today? No. Okay. And last night, did you... Last night, I just went to bed. Did, like, I still... What was going to happen was I had to go do my uh, monthly parole for Georgia and go um, get an appointment with my doctor this week. And so I was deciding 
between quitting and doing this or doing everything I have to do okay. and getting ready to See. like go through um, probation, mm -hmm. go to the hearing in April and talk to my therapist. Okay. So you feel like you're deciding between... I tried to make it a choice mm -hmm. between those two. Like do I kill my stepdad and try to run for the hills and get away from everything or do I follow through with what I need to do, go to court, face the consequences? Okay. So those you felt like are kind of your two choices. Like I made it in my mind. I was like, today we're going to decide because I was pinning them against each other. Mm -hmm. And I was like, today we're going to decide what we do. And so I went to bed that night thinking about it and I woke up. Why is today the day you have to decide that? Because I'm going to go to my th talk to my therapist tomorrow. Okay. I was. So you haven't done drugs, alcohol, you haven't taken any medications, prescriptions in like the last three or four days. But this whole weekend you're contemplating, do I do what I need to do and follow through with my probation, face the charges up north, or do I take this alternative plan and try to run away from it all? Is do that I try. accurate? Do I try or do I quit? Okay. That's what I was saying. And when did you decide I quit? I hadn't decided until this morning and when she was gone I decided that when she came back I was just going to try and not think about it and try and do it and I did it. They now ask Joshua about his mental health and substance abuse. Was this crime done with a clear mind? Does Joshua suffer from mental health problems? The more information they can get from Joshua the better chance they will have of securing a conviction in court. I want to ask you a, kind of a weird question. Do you um, do you ever hear voices that you feel like you're hearing that other people around you don't hear? Yes. You do? Have you ever talked to your therapist or anybody about that? He, he knows it. He thinks it's from the... Like he said, um, when I started doing it, that's when I would be seeing... Like I, um, I, I've seen things in public that I knew I shouldn't believe, but that makes me think there's a lot of things I've seen that I wasn't sure about. What do you mean by that? Like sometimes um, I'm hallucinating and I hear the radio say something or people in public say something that they shouldn't be able to know. And so I know when I'm on the drug, I hallucinate, but I don't know about all. So how do you know that you're hallucinating? Because typically someone that is doesn't even realize they're hallucinating, right? So how are you aware of the fact that you're hallucinating? Because there was like a, a small few that I confirmed. Like, so have you ever like like when this is happening have you ever said hey did you hear that to somebody like you all the time yeah and i've seen like water on my pants i see it and i touch it and it's dry that's what i would notice when i was drinking sometimes mm -hmm. okay so these the hallucinations and such that you're talking about it's when you're high or when you're drinking yeah okay I'm not sober and what when i'm not sober and when you're not sober okay yeah. when you are sober then you don't really you don't recognize or you're not aware of that stuff like you don't yeah. remember doing that when you're sober right I get this like sometimes I'll get the same things or I'm like thinking crazy stuff contemplating as the interrogation comes to an end the detectives have one last question for Joshua Josh before we kind of wrap this up I, I, I just want to leave it kind of in your court are you sorry Yes. Josh, here's the thing. We don't want you to manufacture any feelings here. Yeah. We don't want you to manufacture an apology or feelings of guilt or remorse, okay? What did I tell you? Part of our job is that we have to read people, right? If you're not so, going to say something to them, that's fine. I get yeah. what you, like, you want to know. Well, because, you know, sometimes people feel bad for what they've done, and sometimes they feel bad because they got caught. And it sounds like you had a plan that you didn't get to see all the way through today. It kind of got screwed up on you, you know? And I can understand that that might be pissing you off too. Like you finally built up I'm the courage. I'm not pissed off. 
that's got to be really tough to watch, right? You wanted your around in your life, you wanted a dad around in your life, and he or she gets to have both. That's not fair. I just, it's not fair, but I know. I'm just, I just made excuses. And I tried to blame what happened to me for how I was living. I was making myself depressed and feel like this. And I tried to blame what would happen. Who are you blaming? I tried to pin it all and my parents and my grandma just for where I was raised. But Josh, it sounds like they took care of you. I mean, they did. They did. You know, it's, it's by your own admission, they did. So wh why why all this hatred? Why all this? Why, why all this? Why all this? Jealousy will tear a person up. It was. It doesn't I make I sense. I don't know necessarily. This is jealousy, Josh. I think this is just something that just you wanted to happen. You want this to happen? I wanted. I wanted to run away, but as soon as I did it, I realized what I was doing had nothing to do with that. And I was just doing a horrible thing, pointlessly. Did you want people to notice you? There was a lot of attention. You wanted attention? There was a lot of going for attention, doing things I didn't need to do for attention. Okay. Well, this is like one of those ultimate things that a lot of people have been paying attention to you. Okay. People are going to be paying attention to you now. I know. What kind of attention did you think was going to come out of this? This wasn't about attention. Well, but you just said it was. Right? I mean, if we're being honest here, you just said it was. So the thing that, the benefit I thought that would come out of this was just a release from what I did to my life. Besides all the problems, like the legal issues, sure. I made myself feel like shit for no reason. And so I wanted to release from all the hard things I had to do and how pointlessly hard I made my life. Do you feel a release? No. Joshua would be found guilty and receive life in prison for his charges. Joshua craved affection from his parents his entire life. He wanted to feel like he belonged. He wanted to feel loved. Perhaps he accepted that his mother was incapable of affection, at least until his sister was born. He would watch as she received the love and affection he always wanted. Do you think that if his mother would have nurtured him from the beginning, that she would still be alive? Or is Joshua just a monster, and if it wasn't his mother, it would be someone else? I would love to hear your thoughts, so please share them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos.